Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a regular meeting of the Board of Trustees and Council. Today is October 2023. It's approximately 7.05 p.m. And I'm calling a meeting to order via a Zoom application and in Zoom live. We are all here. And you are welcome to be here with us as well. Um, okay, a lot's happened since our last meeting. Um, I call it order. I call it statement of compliance. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Law, PL 1975, Chapter 231, setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of the public meeting through a legal notice published in the record, posted on the bulletin board, and on the borough website. Thank you, Carol Walker. Mayor Cranjack? Here. Member Villari? Here. Member Katrubles? Here. Member Kim? Here. Councilor Here. Member Simon? Here. Member Jacob Gorio? Here. Mr. Stone is absent, and Tony Marinello? Here. Thank you. Um, right after the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, we're going to have a moment of silence. And then um, I encourage somebody from this council to make a motion condemning homeless and all its affiliates and advisors in the recent uh, attacks on Israel. First stop. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In a moment of silence for a resident uh, who passed away, Dr. Lascomo Umari. Thank you. At the front, anybody want to make that motion? Motion, Okay. All right. Can we just have it all in favor? Or we're going to have an issue here. Okay. okay. Discussion to the motion to condemn any assets, advisors, and affiliates who have attacked Israel. Can we turn off your phone, please? Member okay. Valari? Yes. Member Katrubis? Yes. Member Kim? Yes. Council President Piano? Aye. Member Simon? Yes. Member Di Gregorio? I condemn violence in any form whatsoever, period, from okay. any party. Is that a yes or no? It's exactly what I said. Well, but that's not a... It's yes, no, I'm staying the keys, David. War is the most inefficient of human acti activities. I condemn violence in any way, shape, or form. That's my. That's fine. I'm sure everybody else here does. I'm not going to be pitching bold and okay. another right. is what I am stating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not an issue of war. This was a resolution condemning Israel, uh, condemning Hamas or others. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of a no vote. Really. Um, yes, sir. I don't know. How do you want to characterize it? The yes? It's against all violence. <laughs> I'm against all violence, period. All wars, wars, the most okay. efficient human activity there is. We, we all agree, but the motion was different. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Uh, Borough Charity Project, uh, Office of Concerned Food Pantry at St. Cecilia's Church in England. Please donate non perishable food items uh, or money on the website. They do a lot of good uh, for a lot of people. There's over a thousand families registered, uh, and and thanks to the misplaced policy of David and Murphy and the legislature, including our own assemblymen and senators, um, it's getting worse, not better. Uh, department reports, um, Mr. Navel, can you give us a DPW report, please? Okay. Okay. The second the second form was delivered. Um, this past week, the chief answer the citation down for the second the infrastructure. The investment continues up in the north end. Uh, 
know, Red Rock and the Love and Road, but uh, they're on your Sorry, but yes. I think people are making noises they can't hear. Maybe if you lift the mic up to your number. <laughs> you better? You better? Thank you, Councilman. Yeah. Um, that's the town. Do smoke testing. Um, they started that today. And the um, the farmer that's in that area was you know, paying the finishing pencils and striping on the roadway. That's just about wrapping up. That should be done. Another, you know, he said, no, we can still burn it. Yes. Something like that. Um, our construction. It's contracted by the county to work with South Rock Brook. They're working in the south end of town, the Castle Drive, and the woods there on the sanitary um, sewer lines. Um, we're going to be South Rock Brook, we have to answer from our side. So uh, they'll be there in the next couple of days and should be done this week. So it works for the county? Yeah, I'm sorry, for the county. Um, it's a common year. We've seen these beginnings next week. We talk with our police. So some of the equipment that we large with, called the trucks and machines in the air street. Um, just uh, we really have a lot of patients working through it all. You should get it picked up in a timely manner. Um, this Friday, we're working with the police department, the fire department, the fire department, for the community night out before we feel that'll be 5 30. We're going to set up and end up for that as well. And lastly, the um, vehicle action, um, I think it's on the agenda tonight, is uh, prepped and ready and that uh, should be going out in the next couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, man. Um, uh, Chief, um, Mr. Neville, would you mind staying? That I had members of the public say that they wanted to have you be able to respond to their questions. So, hopefully, if it's not too late, mm -hmm. first thing up is the uh 911 system. I know that's on the agenda for this evening to uh move to the county answering the 911 system. Uh, it's not for a lack of effort uh, on our end. It's gone on for approaching two years. Uh, uh, the the failures are, are, are well chronicled. I shared them with uh, Mr. Marinello, and there's a resolution to dissolve our the agreement with that uh, vendor um, and uh, send the 911 calls, uh, whether permanently or in the interim, to the county. I, I think that is the best and only solution uh right now chief hold on there i'm gonna start at the beginning uh i don't know just uh it, it started about two years ago when we lost the phone system right. uh there was a catastrophic failure with the 911 system um uh, the first issue was uh financing uh, from the from the bell side that took a little bit of time uh then we uh sourced the vendor uh, procurement of the hardware was, uh, you know, supply chain issues. Um, we actually, back in January, uh, went live for a very short period of time. We had the state come up and uh, do an inspection. Uh, and it was realized that the Verizon had sold us the wrong type of phone lines. Um, I, and, and where I got frustrated was Spoke and Verizon. Uh, from the earliest design and engineering phase, had an opportunity to design it from the ground up, and they failed. Um, so after we realized that, then we had to buy um, special trunk lines, special routers. Uh, the, the borough was more than patient and more than generous. Um, and to this day, they still can't get the system running. Uh, I'm out of patience. I'm, I'm sure everyone else is out of patience. And like I said, it's not for lack of effort. Okay. It's a failure on the vendor, on the vendor's part. So when you switch over to the county, will there be testing period, or how does that work? Uh, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm, I, there are many towns that do it that way, um, so it's a well-tested system. I spoke to the director today, as a matter of fact, to make sure that we don't need to purchase any additional hardware. It will run through our phones uh, with a dedicated phone number. So, uh, we, we may need to purchase one additional phone line as a dedicated phone number for them to communicate, but no additional hardware will come into our desk. So they'll answer the call and just relay to us. You need an ambulance at 123 main street and we will do the dispatch from there. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, what are other municipalities use? Uh, some, some keep it in house. Um, 
that was my goal two years ago when we started this. Um, if it's something that I would like to revisit down the road, uh, I'd be open to it. But because of the the perpetual failures, um, I think we have to do that for now as a solution. The last two years, uh, Fort Lee, Fort Lee is our, our spillover. Um, they, they've been burdened with answering all of our 911 calls. They've been true professionals and very patient. It's not their job, uh, but they've done it. And, and because we're no nearer to a solution today than we were a year and a half ago, I think we need to relieve them of that burden. And we can always revisit it in, in the future. But for now, I think the county is the best solution. Uh, one more point. So when we, for the municipalities that you keep it in-house, have you uh, talked to them and asked them which vendors that they use? I'm sure you must have touched that already. Uh, when, we, when we did this, we, we, we got multiple uh, prices um, from well-known vendors. Actually, the vendor that we ended up signing on with was the vendor that we had been with for 10 years. Right. Uh, no, this was uh, Spoke. Uh, is the nine the Verizon provides Spoke is the hardware and software of the system, and we had had a relationship with them for ten years. So it not only were they the least expensive, we had a, an existing relationship. It made sense to stay with them. Um, where this all went wrong from the design and implementation, I I can't tell you. They they have to explain that. Thanks. Um, Have you considered other vendors? Well, that would take a lot more time to get joints, get funding, um, implementation, design. I mean, we're talking probably another year. And to to just leave fully answering our calls while, while we figure out what we want to do, it, it's really unfair. Like I said, they've already been patient and professional all this time. It's... They, they should be relieved of that. Uh, I'm, I'm just concerned that when we go to a, a larger, uh, it's not a municipality, it's a county. I always, I always feel like we wait on phones and things like that. I mean, if you check so, them out, if you... So, if you so what it's worth, um, the other chiefs I've spoken to are happy with the service. Okay. Well, I've been doing it for 20 years now. County probably started... At least 10 or 15. We need a minimum ten or fifteen. Yeah, they run a they run a, a a massive operation up there with plenty of personnel. Mm -hmm. Yes. One final question. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not opposed to your solution. Yeah. But did um uh, has Ocean, the IT company, played any role in this? No. Are they giving you any support? No. Separate. Completely uh, separate. Completely. Uh, Ocean is is our network. Uh, this is uh, an independent uh, system, and nobody from there could have assisted. No. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, Councilman, we spoke about uh, the stop sign. Uh, my offer still stands. If you'd like us to uh, look into that, we will. Uh, please get back to me on that. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. Stop sign. What does that mean? Uh, we were on an email. Uh, uh, a resident had uh, requested a stop sign at the uh, summit southbound at Irving. Um, I, I offered the services of my officers to um, uh, assess the, the, the necessity and feasibility of a stop sign there. Actually, the uh, resident that I spoke with said that everyone on the street is going to sign something to. And so it wasn't just the one resident. It was okay. the group. She spoke for actually the group of residents. Yeah. So I, I wanted to, I know in the email that, uh, you know, I, we shouldn't knee jerk at one resident, but Correct. if you have a group and there's a safety concern, I would be remiss not to. I, I, I offered it um, only, only because we have training and experience and in, in estimating speed, perfect things like that. That's yeah. what we do. So, uh, great. I see. Thank you. I yeah. just wasn't sure what you meant by it. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Sorry. And, and, and I, I believe uh, the borough engineer would also need to be consulted on stop signs. But... Why is that? It may relate to uh, a need for DOT to review. Uh, we have traffic experts who would uh, provide that guidance. But this is uh, in town. This is not a county road or, or anything. It's uh, it, it's it's off of Sylvan Avenue. Uh, there may be a need for uh, for that. It's, it's within the residential community. That, that's a, correct. It, and we'd be happy to uh, to review it. 
Okay. While you're at it, um, the stop signs that uh, at the end of uh, Johnson that goes to that nice glowing one that, uh, you know, for the those areas, certainly I think the town deserves a comprehensive review of where we have traffic problems, also where we have flooding problems, and come up with a, um, a strategic plan for the future. So um, I'm not sure what's stop sign on it's at the end of johnson as you go into woodland it's in Englewood. johnson and yeah that that wouldn't be our sign that would it's a stop sign that um but i think but they were just i think what they were saying is we need comparable ones in, in other areas is that what you're saying yes yeah yes. I, I understand yeah I, I think we need to kick up all the the safety signage all over town um and uh i i would hate to have to bother um uh bernie uh because i know he charges so what he charges um as uh the superintendent mentioned uh we have plenty of uh construction projects and road work in town um as he mentioned national water main started the smoke testing today i worked with uh assistant chief Nikau on dispatch procedures uh for events of smoke and houses um Community events. Uh, we uh, one of my officers will be in the schools uh, in the coming weeks to do Halloween safety for the kids, uh, and we will be at EC Day on uh, Friday evening. Uh, weather ready, and finally, our uh, two new officers are uh, fully trained and on their own doing well. That's great. Yes, wonderful, uh, Chief. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you guys nine one one. What are the economics in terms of recovery monies paid and and future expenses to the county? Sure, um, it, it, it's far cheaper. Um, it, it runs about uh, I'm going to estimate about twenty seven hundred a year. Um, it's a I believe a five year uh, deal, so it's in the neighborhood of 13 or 14,000 over five years. Okay. The system that we had purchased was in the ballpark of 130,000. Um, so uh, only as far as I understand, one uh, the payments were broken into thirds. As far as I know, uh, about 41,000 is what the town is out currently. And I'm sure Mr. Malnell will work on uh, recovering uh, those those funds. I don't, I don't know how much of it is recoverable, but certainly they haven't provided the service they were supposed to provide. So what are the plans to recover it? Taking that direction from the council. The council asked me to go forward with trying to recover some money from it, including possibly suing them for it. I'm happy to do it. So why isn't that on the agenda tonight? Because you haven't even canceled the contract yet, Mr. Mayor. So we could do both, can't we? You yeah. certainly can. The council can do whatever it likes. Happy to do it. I like that proactive. Sent to it. It's well, do we need a motion? We're going to get to that later. Yeah. So, what's on the agenda, that just to be clear, is the cancellation termination of the contract. So, I think what we should do is we should add a, a, a litigation element to that, right? Perhaps. No May I just add to the uh, cost effectiveness? Uh, we currently have to do uh, four hours of live training uh for officer to answer in house too so that that's uh, additional cost on top of the uh system so. sure yeah uh, for what that's worth okay thanks appreciate it four hours new with the new system or uh four hours every officer every year to be an emergency medical dispatcher well, why would they train them every, every system if you're going to answer 911 in-house yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's what I want to be clear on. So now that we're going to the county, nothing. That's what I, that's what I want to be clear. No. The, the cost is no. we're saving Correct. from having not. This is what we talked about last year as well. Correct. The county officers have to be trained for dispatching. So that's what I just wanted. To be yes, clear. that's in addition to the system. Right. They yeah. don't need that anymore. So on top of the something thousand that you mentioned. Correct. Also for whatever dispatch officers, four hours a year, every year for training. Okay, I just want to correct. Make sure that yep. yeah, so. Yes, sir. Chief, one last question. Uh, in terms of the safety towards the residents, the solution will affect them anyway. I don't foresee any issues. Um, public safety is what we do. We we take it seriously, um, as does every other chief in the county. And like I said, I've I've only heard good things. Um, so I, I'm not worried about that. 
Chief, does that mean uh, you'll have extra money uh, since you're not uh, spending the money on on this uh, project? This was capital. This was not out of my this budget. Was capital. This was yeah. capital. Okay. Yep. Uh, 2020 or 2021 capital. Okay. So not in my, not in my budget. Okay. Thanks, Chief. You're welcome. Sir. Got some questions for uh, BPW, if that's okay. Uh, right. Sure. Um, Mr. Neville, um, yeah. Sorry, am I excused or do I need to stay? Uh, it's fine. It's late. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, if you can, um, we're going to go. Yeah, that's, that's fine, Chief. That's fine. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Thank you. So, Mr. Neville, there's, there's a few questions, um, if you don't mind. Thanks. So maybe get to the microphone so we can uh, people at home can hear you. Um, first question is um, the um, uh, you mentioned the sewer lines, uh, the sanitary sewer yeah. lines. What are they doing downtown to the down in the south end by Castle Castle Jenkins? Yes, the sewer sewer lines that cuts. So yes. uh, yeah. run, run, we still sat like the October thing, which would be that way. Okay. So the county, it runs into county, so it's all county. Yeah, it goes eventually to the Burger King. Oh, no, correct. Until it correct. So the county was contacting with the company right. to inspect them how they're having problems on their ends. Okay. So they're inspecting the lines, basically. Like, but their access point is mm -hmm. here right. to get into them. So do we dump anything into that? Thanks, Lord. Okay. Oh, sure. So, do we know the nature of the problem? Not yet. That's what I. They were just here yesterday, today, and I think tomorrow. So, okay. once they get them back to me, and then while we're waiting at night, so I don't have any daytime action told. No, I hear something about smoke testing. Yes. Okay. But I hear nothing about cameras. Cameras. We're supposed to have cameras going that's through. Part that's the, uh, no. if you don't mind, but that's yeah. part of the same contract with National uh, Water Main. Uh, Today, they started the uh, smoke testing within the drainage area A, as, as we describe it. Uh, Mark had indicated at the north end of uh, now, notices went out uh, uh, and uh, uh, notices will continue to go out as they'll be moving Friday further south into drainage area B. Regarding your question on the uh, the cameras, that's going to be part of the, uh, the process uh, as well. So that'll follow suit. We're looking at the uh, uh, approximately uh, a month and a half uh, for them to continue with, uh, with this work and get the reporting uh, back to us uh, during that time frame uh, with the camera work that was identified will be uh, we'll, we'll commence. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Uh, the um, the pipes that 800 Sylvan is going to be uh, Flowing into that development. Are those, right. those pipes are you're inspecting those go along line W, as I understand it? Well, we, we have it along Sylvan, and, and then it gets into drainage area B, which ties into uh, uh, you know this area here where we're currently at the Hudson Terrace Con and, and so forth. Uh, so so that's all part of it. So it's going to uh, address uh, the uh, uh, the two areas of the affordable housing projects uh, that we have that uh, go back to the uh, uh, Boswell supporting the TWA uh, conditionally that uh, right. uh, this work uh, would have to uh, uh, happen. So, so the study is is uh, uh, completing, and uh, we'll see as a result of that. I assume that uh, we'll have some pipelining. Uh, uh, to address some of those infiltration mm -hmm. flow issues that'll resolve that issue. Okay. Um, in town, there's been reports of uh, effluent coming up through the sanitary sewers also. So uh, I think we, have you made note of where the locations? Yeah. So I, I would highly suggest the council consider at some point, point very, very soon to develop a plan and to put a map, let's have a map and let's see where the problems are and then have a strategic plan as how to go about this. Um, it seems that the maintenance of this, of these systems has not been top priority for many years. Um, can you enlighten us as to what maintenance has occurred on the sanitary sewer system in your tenure here? So it's smoke testing in the video was really determined illicit connections, which are pipes 
basically wrongly connected to the cemetery. So that's what we're trying to eliminate. So yes, um, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. It's not supposed to be, you know, we have two, we have two separate systems here, Council. Right. Right. And it's supposed to stay that way. That's that's deep. So how far back do those connections go? Is it from the uh, installation or is it? Uh, it yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, it could be years, man. It could be, you know, you know have you ever contacted the Bergen County Utility System? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Have you uh, done statistics on how long it takes to recover after a heavy rain? Yeah. Uh, well, not, so, not according to the Clayton County Utility Authority. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I think as a superintendent, it's very important to monitor what's being, how how quick the recovery is. I was informed that there are towns where that goes absolutely, it stays even in a, in a heavy rain, it stays static. So obviously we have some severe problems that could right. by right. heavy rain that we have I, what they call I and I. It was an infiltration. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right. That's right. So, uh, you, you raised a, a good point, uh, Councilman, uh, uh, with the, with the uh, various uh, areas of flooding. So uh, uh, I've uh, been in contact with uh, uh, the borough administrator and Mark uh, after we address the affordable uh, housing, and we'll be looking at the, the other areas of town and making recommendations to the mayor and council on uh, on exactly what you're uh, adjusting. I was on Elm Street and I saw a fountain of effluent coming out of Elm Street. Elm Street yes. Okay. So I think there's someone in the audience that might live on Elm Street okay. can attest to that. So, I think we need to really attend to this carefully yes. uh, and develop, a, as I said, a strategic right. plan in the future. So we don't spend $10 million all at once, but we can spread it out over years. And then at the same time, save what we're dumping down because we're paying a million dollars a year to the Bergen County Utilities Department. Was that stormwater effluent? Or was no, that was coming to the center of the street, and that's the center yeah. of the street directly yeah. from is the sanitary yeah. sewer. Right. I, I, um, I have a question. So I've been flooded before when we had Sandy, when we had, you know, the major storms. This year I got flooded. And I don't normally get flooded, and I could get no help from anybody. You know, build a craft, we were up to our ankles in water, trying to get the water out. Um, uh, so something is going on. I'm not concerned. I think. Was that this September 11th? This last one. This last one. Uh, yeah. 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 In September, as, as you watch the news, the September 11th story uh, it was reported uh, that the Englewood Cliffs uh, received over three inches of rain during the uh, time frame, uh, about nine minutes. Uh, so, generally, that's speaking to uh, a 500 year storm event. Uh, uh, so, there's flooding well, uh, yeah. the uh, storm too, and, and with uh, the ground saturation, there are issues. And part right. of what uh, the councilman had indicated uh, uh, that would be the next step. Uh, right. to get any so, 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 my concern is is that I made a phone call to the police department and said, "I don't know what to do here. Uh, who can help me?" I, I made phone calls, but it was available. Uh, luckily, I got a friend who got two of those machines that helped me pump the water out. Um, you know, the disaster and everything. But the response of the police department was that uh, many people were having storage backups. And that's that's very totally. He said there's a lot of calls coming in. And so, my biggest concern, and I think I mentioned this a few times, is that. When I said that stormwater was going to seep into storage, or some council laughed at me. But the fact is, is that obviously the stormwater is affecting the sewer system. Right. Okay. And uh, well, all I want to know is, is that I, I just want to be sure that the residents of this town understand that this land, and I understand that the report is not ready yet. That uh, so part of the smoke testing today, so it's that the process that we're in, we're 
they'll do the evaluation. Or it's, uh, we'll see what it is. I uh, have cross connections. Right. The mark that will indicate and uh, come up with a, a plan to present to the, uh, to the council. And uh, as I indicated, uh, I find that uh, uh, some pipelining needs. Uh, you have old infrastructure here, uh, uh, water just inflows and infiltrates into the plan, as you had indicated. Uh, you're adding so then to the uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so my, cons my concern is, and I'm not an engineer, I don't profess to be an expert on water and all that. You're flooded and you see the issue. Uh, is, is that my concern is, is that putting a liner in an existing sewer system that is now going to have an influx of so much more sewer, what is the line there? I, I'd like to know, what is the line we're going to do? It's going to stop the inflow and the trading mm -hmm. into the system. Uh, so you, you have uh, surcharging uh, concerns. And you don't think that uh, with all the developments that are going to be going up in this town, that the sewer system is going to be able to withhold all the additional sewer that's going to be going into it by just putting a line there? The presentation uh, that was the, uh, Given uh, by Kevin Bothwell in that the uh, meeting back in February on uh, mm -hmm. on, on that, so uh, uh, the uh, TWA conclusionally at that point uh, because we did have the uh, uh, given by the engineers for our uh, uh, projects that indicated uh, uh, you're okay during dry weather flow but wet weather flow uh, you have a problem so the capacity is there with you know, it's based upon our analysis of it uh built the lining and filter pairs that we have uh, as a result of our findings of this uh, will address uh, your question I appreciate you. Um, I, I appreciate uh, Councilman Vigorio and Councilman Vigorio raising these issues. And very, I was trying to remember, and, and I thank you for reminding me when, when Mr. Boswell was here, and it was February. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the, the TWA was rushed, right? Now, if you go back, I'm not sure what you mean. It was, it was certified as being viable in fact now we know it's not I mean, then it wasn't but you guys signed it you guys did what you had to do i wasn't going to sign it well, let me finish yeah let me finish and then we agreed that we were going to do the testing and it's going to be done and here we are uh, so i just wonder what happens since february i, I, I just have the timeline it's kind of going along with the timeline that I originally told, uh, I guess, Judge Farrington back in 2017 that we can't support high density units in this town. And we just admitted that as well because if it rains, uh, people are not going to go to the bathroom if it's raining. It's a conditional approval for the TWA that indicated they can't have your until the repairs are made. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying to give you a hard time, but what happened since February? Why don't we just still do the testing? So I was going to do testing, we're and then we're working with a, a prior uh, administrator, uh, and uh, there are delays uh, associated with that. Uh, the prior administrator has been here since what, May, June, um, in September. So contracts have been assigned, and the uh, here now, so that process is uh, listen. I'm not trying to watch it, I'm really not trying to watch it. But the longer these things are connected, the better off this county is in my view. But it's the law, and they comply with the laws. And instead, said that so you need to do this investigation, and then you have to come up with a plan. And the things that are have been um, you, I hope. Right, it can't just be possible because uh, you know, you were a uh, uh, I would suggest you have to be the engineering firm because you know, this is not enough, and you're going to actually write you a lot. Um, but Bosnia is the cause of 
Bagra is the cause of, um, of the flooding in the south just because of the way the storm system was handled. So, so excuse me, so in Bagra, right? So I just think that when I'm on this, it needs to be by an engineering firm to confirm that whatever you guys are going to do is fine. And then I, it's a 10 year time or 20 year time at this point because it, it's a year you have to remember testing. So, can I yeah. check a little bit? I understand, and, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there are several measuring points in town to measure the effluent, which is what we flush and we, you know, flush and whatever mm -hmm. goes down the drain. So I would think that if an, a careful analysis is done of each one of those measuring points, and that, those, that data is available. I'm not an expert, but I know the data is available. Has anyone ever looked at the data to see which areas of town are are uh, uh, unusually high during um, this is you have to do detective work. And have you done this in other towns where you've looked at the different? Yes. OK, so we have to do that in this town. So we need to have. And, and, and that has uh, uh, commenced as part of uh, the whole process here with those points and uh, uh, to the mayor's point, too. Uh, but we were given those uh, reports and studies by uh, uh, independent engineers who were worked for the developer who submitted that. So, however, the mayor and council want to proceed with that once we present our uh, findings and suggestions. Uh, so be it. I mean, I like a presentation and a very new PowerPoint presentation. Exactly. Well, but the pick amount yeah. of uh, effluent is coming from this flume. And then after rainfall, how much is coming from that flume and how long it takes to recover. It's only, to me, it's only common sense. The data is there. We don't have to camera a whole bunch of stuff if we know and can centralize the problem. I would imagine that the engineering firm is fully capable of doing that. And should this should be done, and in, in a sense, we'll pay for itself because we pay a million dollars a year for this. And if we're proactive, and if the town were proactive for the last 10, 15, 20 years, I don't think we would be in this uh, position because we would be sealing pipes. We would see where we need to make repairs. We would need, uh, we would know where the, um, the the problems are. So if we centralize it, if you, we're, you're going to be going all around town saying, where are the pipes leaking? Where are the pipes leaking? Well, we can, we can figure that out with data, and we, we should. And I, I would like to request that we do a study, do a PowerPoint presentation, and we have maps, and we can make informed decisions instead of being a blind man in a room, feeling our way around. So, so uh, the, the data is there. I, 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 as I mentioned in a short while ago, uh, uh, exactly that's uh, those discussions are being had with your borough administrator, myself, the DPW superintendent. So you're on the right track, and that's the process. So, so that, I, 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 that's the point, Mr. Dean. I said, borough administrator, because we only need, and she was. She admitted we only met once a month. I'd like to see a detailed report. Well, uh, as to what is happening, we don't know generally what's happening. I'm again a blind man. We only meet once a month. Borough administrator, I've requested and she's agreed to. I haven't seen a report yet, but I'd like to see just bullet points. This, that, this, that. Then, so, so, so those, those, those are good points. But I also, because I, I, I am not going to be mad next year as I'm not running again, but self imposed two terms. But for everyone here and for this council, just make sure that whatever testing is done, it is done during business hours on a long holiday, because that's when, you know, when. That, that's when we're going to see what the problem is. I'm not going to, like a Sunday and, and it's going to get all like, you know, scanned around here. Do it when it's busy, do it when it's raining. You know, do, those are your bad effects. Yeah. Not on a nice day two months after it was raining. Point. If I can uh, highlight one of your good points, uh, you were mentioning something about building codes. 
garages that are below surface. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, that's another common sense solution. They look great, but not but, 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 and it's at the same time, it enables the builder to make more money to have more square footage. So what can we do? But I can maybe open this up to Mr. Barnello. What can we do as a town to affect changes in the in the codes, uh, the building codes? So we would disallow that in most areas. And hopefully your town codes, your ordinances can be filed. Some towns don't allow basements at all. Okay. Uh, maybe there's various ways to, uh, to address that. So is it the planning board that is the planning board? So that the basements aren't the problem. It's these garages and the driveways that become a, that become a swimming pool. Yeah. Uh, that we designed for a 10 year storm. And when you get a 500 year storm, you get Ivy, you get Sandy, you get the rains that uh, uh, have, uh, I think the news report was uh, this year, and uh, the most recorded rain in the since uh, records were established in 18. It's just not worth the headache when it rains like that. So, something I've been living with something 35 years, I think. And I never flooded in my basement. And all the years that I've been on Lucas, I never flooded in my basement. I did flood during those two major storms. This was the first time that I got flood. And I have to tell you, maybe we should consider some kind of building changes because in, in, on the north side, usually all the old houses are, are built on flat and we are maintaining those, and you can never make those on homes. So maybe well, that's, a, that's an excellent point. The cables going around the front. Yes, so, and the bridges are down. Uh, yes. So you can have these. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. Two steps. Right. Down, right. Down to your your three car garage with right. your. Uh, so, so it's a matter of. So that that complies to do. With the uh, whoever the planning board, well, or certainly uh, the building department, uh, uh, all of us. Yeah. Uh, okay. Could I just bring up one more? Okay. Could I bring up one more point, please? Who is our point person, our liaison to PSCNG? Was that yourself, Mr. Neville? I'm contacting Okay, because they have a, a hundred ninety-nine million dollar project going on yeah. in town, and I see, you know. I know that there was past discussions and there were changes and everything else, but I see going down um, Pershing, I see these uh, double-sized uh, utility poles going up. And those utility poles, are, I mean, if I were looking on Pershing, I would be a little upset to see these huge... Now, at the same time, down Charlotte, they've put everything underground. So I just would like to know, I mean, who is calling the shots here? Who is who is saying what they can and cannot do? And I think the council needs to more information about that. I reached out to PSCNG with six questions. They did answer it after a few weeks, but we need constant communication with them. Okay. Um, you know, who 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 is doing that? How does that work, Mr. Neville? Who decides uh infrastructure? But I can reach out to them and get some, some clarity on what, what's what I, mean, I heard that they there was an opportunity which went up in smoke of them building the whole new DPW building for us. Um and that that was an opportunity that was missed. I think that um, if there if there could be ways for us to negotiate, I mean. They don't, they're paying only six thousand. Well, six thousand for the for the street, but mm -hmm. I think that we really need to have a very strong communication with them. Maybe we can help them. Maybe they can help us. Okay. So we need to find out who's in charge and okay. have a, a, a dialogue. Sure, I can and judge my fellow administrator, whoever needs to have that. Um, last question: sweeper. Yes. I heard it goes out once a month. Yeah, we have a very expensive piece of equipment and a lot of dirty streets. Oh, oh, my own question before that is how many people did we hire so far? Actually, we have applications in house or scheduling. We hire zero. We're yeah. hired, we're hired, hired, no, not yet. It's for like a year. No, not yet. absolutely zero. No, but that's hard to believe. Yeah. And you told us way back a year and something ago, we asked you how many people 
I, I would do, I think you said nine. And then we asked how many would have full staffs? 14. Now, mm -hmm. to me, I would have said, let's hire. I mean, yeah, let's get some, let's get some people in. We haven't hired anyone. Who uh, in charge of the hiring? Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Councilman. Who's, who's in charge of hiring? Uh, oh, yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're aggressive in advertising, if you put things, if you put things out in the paper, where people read it. Translated into Spanish, you gotta have a little innovation. So, sometimes spellies. I'm sorry. Spellies. Spellies. I'm talking about the whole of my show, but I think that's for life. I just find it hard to believe that we've gone for a whole year and we haven't hired it. So do you think uh, like ladders or any of the pretty sites would be a fan? Sure. I mean, I mean you've got to get the big science and put them on the telephone poles and whatever. I mean, it's, yeah. it, nobody's going to want to work here if they don't know that their jobs. Yeah. Run it to DPW. Help want it. Perfect. Okay. I'm okay. talking to you. Show me. We signed the fund for the volunteer fire department looking for volunteer fire departments. We could do the same for yeah, Absolutely. The fire department, I am absolutely yeah, sure, would be happy to put a big sign up looking for help for uh, DPW. Okay. We have a lot of people passing by. And okay. I mean, we have to think out of the box okay. a little bit. So, so it's very has nothing to do with being involved. That's a job that we're getting. And you just said uh, that nobody wants to get involved with us. Okay. So, applications, and you know what? Well, you're obviously not advertising, and that's because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would love to have a nice municipality job. Not at the price that we're paying. People can't afford to have to live on the market. Even if they're shot, this has been an issue that's so what are we paying? What are we paying? What are we paying? It's like a thirty thousand Job. Sorry, I don't agree with you. So, so just so that the retirement authorized you to part to do as much overtime as needed. Uh, and I was happy to see them there for the 5K. So I think we need to uh, we need to be more aggressive. There's a lot of work to be done in town. Uh, we really need things better. Um, and uh, you know, and think out of the box a little bit to get what what the residents deserve. Um, thank you, Molly. But by your vision, um, on the most similar lines, having to increase the diameter of some of those parts in the last cliff, because I, as I recall, a diagram that Mr. Bowser had written us that there are you know, six, eight, ten, twelve inch pipes, the ones where the high density housing will be, you uh, know, actually. So if if that's the case, how would you actually explain the diameter of this pipe? Would you have to basically blast a trench for those? Because we're in a rock here. I anticipate the uh, expansion of the pipe size for, uh, for the uh, sanitary uh, system. Uh, we are starting to, uh, to look at some of the uh, flooding areas come in and see uh, uh, some you know, 24 inch pipe going into an 18 inch pipe or 12 inch pipe. So uh, there may be uh, some capital improvements associated with uh, the storm system. Okay. And then finally, on Dykeman Hill, has anyone heard anything about that? I, I actually walked down that hill. It's still um, a mess. It's not open to traffic, but it's open to pedestrians, which is even not a good idea. So what yeah. I, I sent that email to you. Yeah. I sent it to put I'll see this public yeah. right? because I, I'm very angry about that also. It's a hazard I'm walking with my point. Action yeah. on that. Yeah. I sent a carefully worded email to Ellen Park, to Gordon Johnson, to Shama Hader from Tenafly, 
uh, to the mayor of Alpine, of Penafly, and yourself, asking for a meeting that we could at least get together and develop a strategy on how we can get that road fixed. I have no idea how to it, right? Well, I got one response from Ellen Park, and it wasn't really all that satisfying. Well, I just want, I, it doesn't matter. I just feel like we have something broken. It needs to be fixed. I don't know the property doesn't actually enhances. Uh, it does, you know, and right in fact, it's a hazard. I mean, if you walk down there, it's not, not right there. You have to be careful. Yeah. 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 So that's uh, too uh, much for that. And he did respond to it also. Okay. Uh, we'd like to get something off the ground. Yeah. And I think that the city of Johnson can help us. The city of Johnson. Uh, yeah. We are making a national party. How about maintaining the parents? Something happens on the spot. Fire department is not. What's that? If so. something happens there, we respond to the fire department is not. I think one of them would have most likely be fairly um, alpine because they'd have to come down those other roads. The, the road's not passable unless there's a, something on the pit, which I know um, you've. I can talk to you about that. Yeah, do you want, do you want to speak on that? Whenever I can give them. All right, yeah, why don't we do that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Neville. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you. Um, oh, one thing I just wanted to say. Um, I do believe that the council, I'm not going to speak, I'll speak for myself. If a fabulous person comes along with prior experience, uh, and uh, I know they do this in the education profession, if someone comes in with years of prior experience, that they are off, can be offered more than the base salary. Let me done that in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Then we should, then again, let's do it. If we, if we can offer them 50,000 because they have proven or cultural experience, that would all be good for the town. Sure. All right, so then we have to get moving on that. No problem. Thank you. Chief. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, to answer the question about the uh, Palisade Interstate Parkway, uh, the fire department uh, provides. The fire department provides services to Mrs. O'Shea, please. Sorry, that's no, right. Uh, the fire department does provide service to the Palisades Interstate Parkway Commission. Uh, we provide services for fires, auto accidents. High angle rescue and anything in the marina that involves uh, biomatic function. Right now, our access is through Edgewater. So, if there is an incident at the marina, for example, a boat fire, uh, it'll be our response through Edgewater. Um, it is a slightly longer uh, response time, but anything confirmed in the marina automatically gets a marine unit fireboat from Edgewater as well as mutual aid assistance from other towns because of the lack of permanent water supply um, at the marina. Basically, we're drafting out of the Hudson River at that point. Um, with regards to the fire department, October is fire safety, fire prevention month. So it's a very busy month for the fire department. Um, just yesterday, we were in Edgewater. Our high angle rescue team uh, provided a demonstration uh for their program down there where we had uh, the repellers uh operating unfortunately uh our ladder truck was out of service due to uh, electrical issues so we had to rely on fort lee providing a ladder truck so that our team could uh operate off of there um the ladder truck has since been repaired it was i understand that uh, they completed repairs today um other events that we're having is we're going to be visiting the schools as well as uh, the nursery, um, the daycare centers in town. The children love it. Uh, and we're also going to be attending um, Anglo Cliffs Day. We're going to have an engine and some goodies to give to the kids. Um, tomorrow uh, is the first of our October boot drives on Palisade Avenue. Um, it's going to occur basically between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And we'll be a fundraiser for uh, the department. We have one this week, and I believe we have one um, a week 
from now uh, approved by the council yes yeah. you guys signed uh, an ordinance approving it it was coordinated with the county i i okay so that's that's rush hour right just just be careful out there yeah no i don't remember saying like vests and things like that. <laughs> they're saying how much do you uh, uh generate i'm not aware of that I'm sorry. So, so Andrew, uh, you know, one thing I just realized this past week is that carbon monoxide detectors have like a 10 year life. And um, it, when you say you guys are out of false alarms, if um, we could tell people to replace them, or at least calendar when they should be replaced, because my mind was going off and really, really realized I had a shelf life and it was central alarms. So, so that, that, that is a very good point. Um, we do find um, that we have been facing an increased number of carbon monoxide responses. Uh, with a large portion of them actually being legitimate calls. And I think that's a very important point to raise uh, education for residents, especially as we go into uh, heating season where gas-fired appliances are more prevalently used. Um, of course, you are right that there are 10-year lifespans on it. Um, unfortunately, the manufacturers don't communicate that well to the yeah. end user, and uh, we do for residents requesting it, provide additional information for them. Okay. So feel free to put a blast out, just tell them to check them. No, we can, we can coordinate that. Um, and the last thing that I have to say before I take any questions, uh, we did have a member uh, complete fire school. Uh, Congratulations. And he will be graduating next week, and uh, we'll go off to uh, the county ceremony, and uh, we'll give him his badge, and. Uh, and uh shield on that date so we appreciate that can you share the name or so it's um fireman paul scrow okay well, congratulations okay. yes Go ahead. Have a pause. No. yeah uh the pancake breakfast that we have is tentatively scheduled for november 5th unfortunately i'm not on that committee so i'm just not aware of the details of it um, I'll just be there either cooking or serving or cleaning. Or... It's going to happen until it's going to happen for our next meeting, so we can just get it out there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will ask the powers that be to um, that, yeah, to send a blast out to you. Unfortunately, um, as I may have been involved in that in previous years, due to my current responsibilities, I've found I've had less time to do the fun stuff, so to speak. So, um, the I notice here you have some reimbursements for fire truck parts. Well, what, are you using your own credit card to purchase them? So I'm not aware of those purchases. The bill is, by the way. Um, I did not submit the bills. I'd have to go through that with the chief. I'm not aware of what he submitted or not. I see Andrew Nicola, um, 120, 287, 135. Okay, I can answer that one. Okay. So when you purchase the new vehicles, uh, when you purchase the new vehicles, they had to be titled and registered with the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey, regardless of whether it's a municipality or a state or a county, collects a initial title fee, regardless of whether you know, you're a government agency. So there are real fees that were expended. So in order to get a license plate, we had to do that. I worked with them to get the appropriate titling documentation, but we were both unaware of this. So when I got to the DMV after <laughs> spending several hours waiting for it, um, I was hit with either I could come back with a check from the bill or I could just put it on my personal credit card yes. and hope for reimbursement. So the most time efficient thing would have been. That was very nice of you. Well, uh, you know, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the state would like to collect money from its own governments. But So I also see some other uh, expenses here for with your name uh, for breakfast, dinner, uh, 550, 634, 379. So I don't think that that was my name. I believe that was the well, chief. That that's was the chief. That's so sorry about that. Every September, there is a firefighters convention, state firefighters convention, uh, as part of the annual close delegation for our relief association. Um, there is a convention there. Uh, during that time, there are meals to be expended. We have several members of the department that come, and it's been a standard practice for the fire department as well as other municipalities. Okay, that's a reimbursement. That's fantastic. Thank you. I'm learning. Um, 
the boot drive, the funds for the boot drive, what do they go towards? So my understanding of that is, and I believe I've explained this to you, there are two components to the fire department, right? So the fire department, so that um, my brother, Chief Nick L, is the chief of department of, and there is the fire department nonprofit organization that's an entirely separate entity. Um, those are fundraising dollars that go to the fire company, which is the 501c3. Those allow us funds to maintain the firehouse, to buy um, meeting night food, for example, whenever we have a meeting. They're used for the membership as well as we engage in charitable donations as well. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, the fire department recently made a donation to the Port Authority for whatever reason. Um, you know, they were undergoing some type of cause in which we committed a financial donation to. So I will not tell you, I mean, that in the uh, in Fort Lee, they do a boot drive and it's the cause of traffic going all the way down Route 4. I'm not personally crazy about boot drives. I think that fire firefighters, it's a little demeaning for them to be basically on the street, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just correct you on that. Um, I'm just saying yeah, my opinion. That, that, that's that's, that's opinion. your opinion. I um, see you have to do that in order to fund yourselves. So if there was another way that you could do it. Councilman, um, I, I think you're sort of missing the point of volunteering, and that is we do it for our organization and take pride in that. So there's nothing demeaning or embarrassing about anything that we do. And that insinuation is actually a little bit insulting to the volunteers. No, I didn't do the timeout because I, I didn't do the timeout to I volunteer. And what you could say was kind of insulting. Thank you, man. I will take your word in a way that it's a shame that it's your time to be on the street, put, to put yourself in traffic in order to raise funds. Okay. I would much rather that the borough would write a check uh, for, for whatever, however we could manage it, um, rather than you and your team members be out there putting boots out and money on, in, 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 the, in the thing. I see it for Lee. Uh, I actually was a little critical of one of the one of the people, and I got cursed out big time. So, listen, if you're going to do it, go ahead. But I think it looks it. it, it Councilman, I will look good. either flip pancakes or I will wash somebody's car, which we have done before okay. as methods of giving back to the department that serves this community. So, so I, that's just my thoughts. So you, you have a support. I appreciate that. I was a few of everything. And um, we wish you all the success possible with the boot drive and be safe. Thank you, sir. And um, we'll make sure the, chiefs, uh, the chief of police knows that you're out there and protect the well. It's been clear. Uh, we do have a safety program in terms of reflective gear, things like that. So, yeah, I, I find when I used to wear a reflective vest rather than my, it was just an attractive nuisance and people would steal right at you. Maybe okay. that was just me, but. <laughs> And I used to do a lot of running. I've been on the call once or twice. So I know that. Yes, sir. Firefighters, for all know that we wish congratulations and we wish of uh, everything in your new department and safety. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, which brings us to our next point. Um, Bernie, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, in twenty minutes, uh, September 13, 2023, regular session. Uh, first bond of the state of New Jersey that the fund is back funds. Block party request. Is that something we can vote on? Is that later? Yeah, just right on now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Can somebody who could send a block party to do this every year. Uh, number 13, 7th Street, October 28, 2023. I'm not invited, but if anybody wants to make a motion, it's here. And then, um, since it was at the last minute, and it's labeled by the police chief. Of the it's the microphone, Glenn. Sure. Um, I would make a motion to approve pending the approval of the police chief because the form was submitted to us today. 
and it didn't have the required signatures on it, but I know we're not going to meet until after. I think we saw those signatures after, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it was to, uh, so okay. It doesn't have the signature, so I'm just going to make sure in my motion, whether you have them already or not, is irrelevant to me. I'm just saying in my motion, I want to make sure that I'm offering the motion pending the signatures. If you have them, great. Okay. Well, yeah, we have them. Yeah, we have them. So I make okay. that motion. Okay, there's a second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Abstain? Recuse? Okay, it passed. Um, approval of September 13th, 2022, regular session. Yeah. To uh, make a motion to table this, I feel that these two regular and closed sessions are too important to approve at this time. Uh, we received a lot of um, emails that are too important to ignore uh, from you and uh, others. And so I'm, I'm requesting it to be tabled. Okay. Is that All right. So, um, can I have a roll call on that? Senator Villani? Mm -hmm. Yes. Just point of order, Matt. We're going to move the point yes. for the takes precedence. Yes. Point of order. 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 Point of yeah. Okay. I would agree that for the sake of the residents and, and these people that are sitting here, uh, these minutes are too into tonight. Uh, there's too many questions, uh, too big of issues, and I really hope that anybody. Um, Can you tell me what issue yeah. you have with the minutes? No, I, I think to touch the uh, the close side, but I think that's that. Specifically, well, I think the minutes are the No, they don't because the fact that Ms. Asbury will tell us the truth in closed session. If you have to bring it to the ring now, it's your question. No, I think we should not do this now. We should not do this now. I'm sorry. I think that I am sorry. You're saying that I really believe that if everybody just uses brains instead of just major reaction these these minutes are too important to many things uh and person involved in this isn't even here and i would really i would really like to table this and i hope that you will know, agree thank you make your motion make your motion before we make my motion the councilwoman made a state that's so there are uh, yeah you can't vote so there are, there are, there are, I don't you want you have an explanation you spend a few times not to know but the council I cannot I cannot I cannot divulge what happened in closed session so I cannot divulge what happened in closed session this is very close section the material statements material omissions, she failed to actually hand it with us and tell us what was going on, and she failed to actually show us the consent order that she hatched with Mr. Um, Marinello and Mr. Atkins and Judge Farrington. So those are the problems, okay? Those are the problems, and, and the most important problem of all that was that, and we'll get to it later, uh, the open statute provides that any kind of penalty gets put to the Treasurer of New Jersey. Mr. Mariano, you agreed to pay uh, you held accountable. But you actually agreed with Ms. Asbury to pay a plaintiff's attorney the sanctions they should be paid to the treasurer of the state of New Jersey. Which is a criminal offense, so, right? Are you suggesting that they provided a, a criminal offense? No, I'm, su I'm suggesting that you didn't tell us the truth. The court was that they be paid to the court. The open 
the statute say regarding penalties and fines? It's not. Okay. You're not the legislature of the state of New Jersey. I mean, Judge Barrington, she does not get to do that. She does not get to actually rewrite the law. Okay? You guys split their days. Yes, you control that very Yeah, you did. You can put that. Okay. It might be nice. Is it you just you know what? You don't have the words to do. You don't have the right to do it. And I did. And you can do it. You did. You actually did. Here's the problem right here. You said that thumb drive. To Mr. Nicolelli. He said it to Ms. Asbury, who never says it to Mr. Atkins, allegedly. And then she says, You're going to be contempt. But you know what? It was provided. And there's actually a live, to prove this, there's a live Google Drive reference in one of Asbury's submissions to the court. If you type that in, you will see a subdirectory that says thumb drive. Okay, so you you all ignore it. You lie in the front of town, and then on top of that, you're paying an attorney instead of trying to New Jersey, which means that you're breaking the law. Right? Part of this law, you choosing it, breaking the law. I am not sure. I say, you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You see that the attorney made this terrible decision. It's not here, right? How terrible. I invited her to defend herself. She's not here. She sent her partner who seems to be involved in income, right? So, look, this is a conspiracy. Okay, this is a conspiracy. I got quite enough of you. I don't know if I hate you. So, sit down and don't make us down. Yes. I'm sorry. 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 I'm
Next time we agenda, did you make a motion? She she said that she has to pay. So they can make a motion. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, and we can still try to make a motion. Okay. So public comment. Here's what um, I'd like to find out from the public because. I've tried to figure out, and I've asked our borough attorney, I've asked the council, I've asked the borough administrator, in terms of employment, do you work on Fridays or don't you work on Fridays? What, what, what do you get paid? And for some reason, this has been a challenge, and it hasn't been voted on by this council either. Okay? So if, you, if the public wants to know, you maybe if you ask, somebody up here will tell you. Um, the, the other thing that you should also recall is that uh, if you recall the last meeting, I said, well, you know, Senator Menendez lives in town. He's got some major issues, blah, 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 blah. And if somebody yelled out, it was his wife, you know, whatever. Um, okay, so look, uh, a couple of Fridays ago, he was indicted. And said, And he said, did I do that? I said, yes, of course. So I don't know if he did or not, but here's the sad thing about it is this is a guy who U.S. foreign policy along with President Biden, right? He goes to Egypt and he's going how much is a gold worth, right? So now you have this problem, okay? Look around the world, what's happening with these clowns running our foreign policy? You got Ukraine, you got what happened in Israel, um, you got a insurgent Taliban, you know, this is not good. Maybe you want some Hudson County, Joe, and for your purposes in Edgewater, but this has got to stop. Do you think when you go to the no when you go to the vote to the polls, make sure you're voting for people who are actually going to not make money off of your backs and do their jobs, okay? Um I'd also like to hear from the public. Well, we talked about Dyke and Hill already, so that, that's kind of a mess to be with. Um, from the so I'm just giving the public some ideas, right? Okay. Um okay. So, I do why. So, so that's actionable. You know, about that. You know, if you believe uh, it's proven that I have not lied, uh-huh. and you keep repeating the falsehood, you're the kind of person who thinks that you can sub your way into the truth. You can sub your way into the truth, but you can't. You know, you think that. And you also recall that in this, I said, this man is better. In fact, he was better. That's right. Yeah. I mean, if you see in the back, there's things that are bouncing up and down. Yeah. Up and down. Yeah. They go into the red. Okay. They're not going to be heard. Okay. All right. So I just want you to. Okay. So is there a motion to the public? I mean, I second that. Does anyone from the public who wishes to be heard? Let me recommend you. Let me recommend you. Come up. Oh, thank you, um, I came tonight because I'm tired of not being able to understand or hear what's going on on Zoom. And unfortunately, you, you, people at home are you trying to the stage right here and you talk over there. I'm looking at the meter up there. Once you go in the red, they're not going to hear you. Really? Yeah. So okay. Like, okay. All right. All right. Um, so like I said, I'm tired of not being able to hear. I don't want to hear you just everyone. So hopefully that will help me. But coming to this meeting, I can't hear a word that's being said by Mr. Marinello, a little bit about our fellow engineer. Forget about the police chief and forget about Mark Noble. Okay, Tim, you sit 10 miles away from the microphone. Maria, I can hear David Paul. Glenn, your, your microphone, Melanie, Chris, your microphones are to the sky. They need to be aimed down to your mouth so that when you talk, it gets projected. I couldn't hear what you said. Something November 6th, I don't know what the hell that was. Okay? Terrible. Terrible. Can I respond to you? Because I have a positive response for you. You want to hear? I, 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 I address it yes. squarely. We had a tech media in here uh, last week. They installed one, two, and two avenues. They installed And the, I asked them to give us a quote for audio. We did the, had to do the video first. The audio, he, we, he has recommended that we replace every speaker in here to put three-way speakers so we'll have much better sound. Uh, get a new mixer. That mixer is probably 20 years old. That, that's underneath here, 
and all new microphones that will be balanced. So the audio is the next project. Um, um, I've asked for a quote, and I think that it would be money very, very well spent. It's not going to be a lot of money, but I think it will, it will specifically for persons like yourself that choose to stay home. Audio is the most important thing. I apologize, but we had to do the video first. <laughs> then the audio will follow. Hopefully it will not take as long uh, because, you know, we just do a purchase order and we're done and probably we could feasibly get it done by the next council meeting. I'm tired of waiting, David. I'm tired of waiting. Okay? That's the problem. Okay, that's what we came tonight so that you have to say. Okay, and like I said, these three microphones, Nobody can hear what you're saying. You got to aim it, bend it. It's out. It's down, and you got to sit in and speak into the microphone. Please. You have to turn them Okay. On. Now, a couple of things. Um, in your in your agenda tonight, um, you have uh, satisfying tax appeals. Unfortunately, in those two resolutions, you do not say the amount of the tax that was applied to the tax bill previously. Um, in the agendas, it will say uh, 2021 assessment, such and such, um, new assessment, uh, refund uh, being applied to next year, whatever the result is. There's nothing in the agendas, in the resolutions that say what the settlement is on either of those two tax appeals. That is wrong. Okay, you should not be voting on that when you don't know the amount. Okay. Um, DPW, uh, I like Mark, he's fine, fine with what he does, but I have to say that, um, the fact that they have applications, they're not hiring. My son applied for a DPW position two or three years ago. He was inter interviewed by Mark and Lizette, and he was not hired. Okay, not a question of the salary, not a question of anything. It was a question of the CDL license. All right, many companies will hire somebody and give them a six month period. And I brought this up at one of the other meetings when they were hiring somebody who uh, didn't have a CDL. And I said, I thought you had to have a CDL. Uh, blah, 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 double talk. Okay. To hire somebody, probation, give them six months to get the CDL because you got to have practice on a truck to go take the test and you have to have a vehicle to go take the test. All right. My son had been a volunteer fireman and drove the fire truck. Okay. But he couldn't drive a DPW truck, pick up garbage. Okay. It's just that they don't want to hire people. They don't want to hire. I don't know what it is. All right. But that is not a correct statement that was made tonight. All right. And for, for if it's forty thousand dollars, that's not a bad salary for somebody to start because a lot of the guys that are down there started it's lower salaries than that and work their way up. They always get raises. Okay. So erroneous, incorrect information. Um when, with the uh, 911 system, it would be nice if, if the amount of the contract was in the agenda. You're going in with the 911 approval for an agreement. There's no price in it. This will shake. Okay. $2,700. Pardon me? The chief said $2,700. I couldn't hear what the chief said. I'm telling you, the chief said $2,700. A year? A month? Yes. A year. A year. Okay, that's good. But yeah, I, I couldn't hear it. You know, it should have been. It was $120,000 a year. I'm saying it should have been in the resolution. That's what I'm saying. It should, the resolution should give this information. Yeah, all right? I'm just letting you know what it Now, my. my Main reason for coming tonight, the other things are just peripheral that came up while I'm sitting here. Um, hours of work for the people in the bar hall. The, the door on the bottom of the front of the bar hall says the hours are nine to four. On the website, it says nine to four. And in one other place on the bar website, it says eight to four. All right. Now, I know Paul Duffy is on vacation last, last, last week. Okay. I came in and um, had to see him on the 23rd. He was here. And then I came back the following, um, came back that Friday. He was not here. What was last Friday? I came at 3 in the afternoon. We went to the second floor, or the first floor, whatever the floor it was, tax office. Nothing was there. <laughs> 
comes. Finally, Kathy sent her out and out of her office and was in the hallway and said, Oh, Mary, they're gone. There's nobody here. I said, What do you mean they're gone? It's now four o'clock. She said, Oh, they left it before. And I said, She said, Beth was on vacation. I said, Well, I think he's on vacation this week. He's on vacation this week. How can you expect to service the residents of this community when you have an empty office in the finance department? Okay? That is unacceptable. You should have somebody there. And if there's nobody there, take somebody from another department and send them up there. There should be somebody there to be able to take payments and checks or whatever is necessary. Okay. I called up then on uh, Tuesday and I thought I was going to talk to Buffy then. And he's still on vacation. And the phone rang considerable, probably 20 times. Finally, a man answered it. And he says, oh, poor Duffy's on vacation. I said, oh, I thought he was on vacation last week. No, he's still on vacation. I said, okay. Um, and I told him that I had to come in on Friday and 3.30 and there was nobody there. He said, oh, you must have just missed me. Ah, convenient, right? I said, well, what are your hours? He says, 8.30 to 3.30. Why is somebody working 8.30 to 3.30 when the building door is open from 9 to 4? Okay, that doesn't make a bit of sense. You're not servicing the public between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. And just leaving early on the weekend. I said, I don't get it. But I was very angry. I was very upset. Okay? And I came here tonight to tell you that because I think you need to straighten it out. I don't know whether it's uh, the board administrator. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to, 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 to uh, the uh, group of guy who's supposed to be the tax collector. I didn't even know. I thought Duffy was a tax collector. But uh, nobody's there. I mean, what, what, do, do any of these people know? Same time where they were all floating, floating, coming out. And then I asked the guy, I said, I have to check there for a thing. And I said, I slid it under the window and I put the date stamp on top of it so it wouldn't go away. He went, oh, there's nothing there now. So I don't know if my check got swept into the garbage. There was other people's checks in there. Okay. It's not the way you're supposed to run a business. And it's always a business. Okay. And I and I hope that collectively this council can correct it. Okay, because it's wrong. Okay. And please welcome to the microphone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Michael tells him I'm not going to go I've looked at some pictures, so I know I'm supposed to put the town in the middle of the city. Thank you. I saw you these, but now I was about them anyway. I just want to say I listened to what everybody said, and I'm kind of just going to draw from whatever you said about different things. And also, uh, both the two of you on the left were not here when I spoke two meetings ago. I couldn't get on last week. I was in New York. I also couldn't get on time. I said something nice about everybody, so just in case you couldn't hear me. Yeah, I, I said I was going to say something nice about everybody, and I did. Um, Mayor, I agree with you about, um, I pretty much agree with what you said about fraud. I, a couple of three months now, I do think that stop and corruption starts on a local level. If it's not going to be local, it's not going to happen. Um, regarding Senator Menendez, I would just say it's not what he did for him, but he deserves a trial and due process. And you know, my own other names had Stevens and Matt Gates and the EVA players and uh, my name. And they are so guilty. And you know, he seems very guilty. You know, but let's we'll see. I mean, uh, look at the pictures that I sent. I'm going to analogize. Uh, let's say there was a tiger on my property. Okay. I don't really have a picture, but you look at the picture and she was a tiger. 
right? And there's also a little team, look at, let's say, right? And let's say the town was responsible for the tiger, and somebody brought a lawsuit about the tiger, and the insurance company brought that piece of evidence into the judge, and there was no longer a tiger in the picture. Every single point made in the, in the personal suit, by the personal suit, the judge would be like, what are you talking about? There's no tiger. Not only that, it would be kind of ingenious because the judge would think, this person has no credibility. Here's this little cat, and he keeps referring to a tiger. So if you notice in the bottom of the pictures, you'll see uh, tassels, as opposed to the straps which speak for themselves. If those straps are doctored out of the picture, one would think, hey, well, what is he talking about? But not only that, if the tassels are left in, it, well, that's equivalent to the analogy I'm drawing with, with a cat. Okay? So not only wouldn't the judge understand what I was talking about if I'm saying, hey, there was a tiger on my property, but if the cat was left in and everything else was left in except the tiger, one thing would make sense. Now, I have a very serious matter, extremely serious and life changing. I want to open just for a second, you know, just speak. Imagine if it happened to you or one of your family members, your life is your life would be over. Okay. Now, I'm saying from the insurance company, we don't owe them anything. I'm going to be in there. They not. Mr. Mayor, you, 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 what has been done? What has been done? We didn't know about it. We didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it until it comes to society. I want something done. That's right before election season. And I, in the past, I have a history of not doing anything before election season. I don't think it's right. Election's going to be in a month. I don't know who's going to be. We're still going to be here. I want something done next month. But what is your ask? So who, what is your ask? What am I asking for? Yeah. Okay. You spoke about corruption and how we have to stop it, right? right. And I said we have to stop it on a local level. Okay. I am saying that I believe, without a doubt, and we need more information to read, that in every way, you look at that picture in front of you, every detail is left in there except the straps. Okay? Now, but you, which straps are you talking about? The ones by the way? No. 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 It's really with the potential straps hanging from the waist. But in other words, if you look at the side, you see the tassels and the kind of thing that is left. So those two, the one straps disappeared. Now there are two, two photographs. So they disappear from one, they disappear from two, a total of four straps and two photographs. There are two photographs taken, right? And they disappear. Now, what's going to confuse you, and I'm going to say now that you're still going to be confused, I'm not talking about what the police did. They're in the criminal case with the police did. Is the except for the you were sending these clear pictures, but they ultimately did. They sent these barking pictures where you couldn't see anything, which is not the same thing. I mean, it's not good, but forget about that. That's going to confuse you. I'm just talking about your insurance company because the police case is over. Hey, if, if you happen to have a board, I'd say, what the hell is this? Um, I, I say straps and yeah. okay. So I say straps and straps, right? Right. Well, yeah. straps. So I have a picture without straps. I have a picture with straps. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. But you see those two little passes? You can only see them in one of the pictures. Yeah. So but those were left. Everything was left. It's not like even the kitchen was left. Okay, so can we, in my view, there can be no mistake that's going to be blocked without. Okay, so what I'm asking is by who? By the insurance company. Doctored out by the insurance company? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I have a. Uh, 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 so, so I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Tyson, was I originally the police that uh, doctored things up? Yeah, uh, police. This is where it's going to get confusing. So I'm going to keep them out of here. Well, in the criminal case, the yeah. police had sent these pictures to pictures, but they sent dark versions where you couldn't see anything. Right. Okay. I had information that, that, that these pictures existed, you could see the straps, 
It took them a year. And Shell was supposed to be over there. It was the room for different reasons for two weeks, thankfully, and these clear pictures came. So the police actually did a job of getting the point of view eventually. Right? So forget about that. What the insurance company did, in my view, is they did what the police did, but they took it a step further. They didn't just darken the pictures, they removed the straps. So one might ask, why did someone do that? Why did he just try to darken the pictures? Well, number one, that's what the clients have done. Okay, but independently, I would say, without a tiger in the picture, right? And the insurance company takes out the tiger entirely. Well, is that as noticeable as if you're sending dark in pictures? So I think I want to let you, because you're learning this. I'm learning all this. And I have to hear you uh, today, Council. So can you just give us the full backstory of why this is relevant right now? Like, it's, 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 it's relevant because when, when, when you have your responsibility, in my view, when you fire, you have to be honest. Right? I agree with you. But, but she is on that. Uh, so I sent them a phone line to tomorrow, which is about two hours of reading. I've told each of them probably. I believe I told everybody to this. Is that so much? I just give them the overview. So, Mr. Tozer, who is a resident of the place, I uh, was uh, walking in the uh, park, Johnson Field, around the circle, and I uh, a little girl, and um, I thought that uh, no one was in a position like that. Yes, the mother uh, made some accusations, and I don't know if she, she actually she, she called me the room. Uh, when the police arrived, there was no accusation of it. Right. I have the tapes. Yeah. There was no accusation of the tapes. There was no children involved. The straps is what made the difference. The straps is what proves that whatever needed to be Larry, well, who was the police chief then? Chief Chapman. Chief Chapman. Okay. Can I ask you, you're talking about this. You have actually, I assume, seeking for a remedy from the insurance company. Is that correct? I am, well, counsel, and it's no longer in the case. So what I'm seeking is that you take an action, as I would, my insurance company before it's going to fly, so I'm going to them. Go after them for what? If any insurance company I had committed fraud in my name, I, I, I would not but stop. This is your accusation, and you're going to be giving us more information yes. regarding this. So, and it's also on, I'm going to be doing tomorrow is, is working on the It's also on PACER, so it's a matter of public record. What they sent me. So, I don't know an apology from the No, I'm not sure. I'm So, I have to stand copies of. You have to bring it to depositions. Okay, so there's no doubt about it. I have the stamp copies. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me clarify something else. What well, thing I want you to do, and it's going to really simplify things. Instead of me telling the story about the pictures, you know, what happened with the police and then what happened with the church, I want you to ask Ms. Kennedy a very simple question. It should take less than 10 minutes to describe exactly what. The, she doesn't um, place it there uh, during her place, but she can tell you exactly what the pictures were before. And she, I'll tell you exactly, she's the first, she's your insurance company. Uh, yeah. the, ins the insurance company hires attorneys, okay? What is insurance company? Right. That's what you're talking about? Okay. I want to give you the basics, but I'm going to do okay? So she can ask her, not even me, Explaining herself will take less than 10 minutes rather than me trying to explain the whole thing. So, can you talk about that? Okay, we're going to the pictures with Dr. Ruby Warren. That's it. Okay. Well, I'm, I don't have, I can, the company is hand to hand. That's what we're Okay, so we're all coming hand on hand. So, Mr. Talzer, yes. Um, Unless, and this is something that our borough attorney should be telling us, but just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. But unless there's a, an action pending, 
the governing body can't do anything really in terms of, I know you're looking for ultimately a financial return, right? I, I wouldn't say that, that there's something that we are clients of them and they seem to pin that to the pay it to, I'm going to give you this immediately. Okay, good. Okay, so it does come down to the fact that I have the stamp deposition items, they're stamped, that they bring to depositions, and then on PACER, and I'll give you copies of it, you have what they submitted, and they have all the stitching, every detail, but not the straps. Right. Look, you know, there, there's a lot of spread that goes on, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, I have ran over about children in 2018. Uh, Mike Kelly from the elected and, and Katie Sabto are constantly telling us what their feelings are and virtue signaling and guy in the room down and start legging the same thing. Quickness, no one knows about this. No one knows about it. So, so that, that's the problem with the way we the change. So, the only way things can happen is the politics also, it's because of who the police chief was then, right? So, that, that's what happened there. And, 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 Started, I'm a bruised, I'm having to ask, you know, you just got to be strong about it and you don't talk to these people because they're not going to stop until you pound them. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I was to five years in state prison and a lifetime of reporting. Whereas before, I know, I read the you know, I don't know if you know this, I was off of the work, I know some things, yeah. And when I went to court, the old workers, the CEO, they said, $125, $125 fine, I wouldn't pay it. So I've been strong about it. Yeah. So now it's the time. We're, we're in what you're saying, but you know what? You and everyone else here, you're pretty strong on If you want to do something, you can. So also, it's Harry, right? In the case of Menendez, who prosecuted him, the Southern District of New York, not the District of New Jersey. And when, when the Attorney General, not great, they were, no, no, not him. He, he, he failed upwards, right? They had to actually be in the Southern District of New York to do the job that New Jersey's not capable of doing at any level. The worst At any level, right? Because the friend of mine used to be with the Southern District of New York and attorney now who runs the business project and all And the things that he tells, tells me are unbelievable. I mean, they're, they're exactly what you say. So, I mean, also seeing Judge Franks, I don't know anything about the case, but I, I believe everything that you say is probably the more. She signed a letter to call a lawyer instead of just to trade here in New Jersey. Who does that? What, what I've seen is astounding. I mean, I, I, people have no idea, you know, what goes on. So, you know, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, I want you to do something. I can't figure it out. I, you know, I've done my part. I need you to do your part. If you don't like corruption, if you don't like what was done to me, if you think I was being courageous, which I was, then do something. Do it, pass the chairman, hand on your hand, I'm going to do everything that you need. So that you see the now, you let you know the say that, that, that the law firm did something wrong to support the insurance company's position. I don't know if you did that. But was in charge. Uh, of this picture. How, is, how does the carbon check strap disappear on four? Tell them. It's the same way that I have to say she never got a thumb drive because she actually told the judge she has in her document, right? So that, that's a way to put it out. I'm sympathetic to your cause. I'm sympathetic to your cause because this is the nonsense that I've been up against for eight years. You can go with Mary Ellen, who just looked at her right? Look at her head. I think got the thumb drive and she says she never got it. Imagine me having been proposed by Kathy Kennedy for 10 hours. She sounds so self righteous, breathing heavily, flirting with the police chief when she the first one, which was kind of sick. And imagine that. And all she was getting was information on how, I believe, on how to do the same thing that she did. So, so let me just close with this. One might ask them, well, why didn't she just darken the pictures like, uh, like the police and them and like that? You know, that would have worked. Why didn't she just? Be dumb enough to just just talk about the cargo short stuff. She would, she would get caught because she was hoping that my rules would not catch it, and they did it. But that said, that doesn't give me right to Dr. Evans because my rules didn't catch it. They should have. Sure. Um, but Mr. Melvin, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How come you didn't catch it? Picture going on trial for what, what, what I did. Picture your entire life changing. Picture having an intense PTSD. Picture doing 
was getting late. And try to imagine that you, that you can catch it. You're saying, okay, I, you know, I think I'm going to check with you. But I do catch it. I, I catch it, but the night before, I wrote my appeal myself, but the night before, all of a sudden, I'm just checking that the footnotes are correct that I'm correlating to. And I, I, see, I, look at, I look at what's on Pacer, and I see there are no straps there. That. So that's why I didn't catch it. But nevertheless, right? Whether I caught it, I mean, when they caught it, the insurance company did not commit fraud, and I will never rest until this is solved. And I, I've never done anything, and some of you know, the sun knows for a long time. I've never done anything to escalate this that I didn't have to do. So I don't want to. And I'm not saying it's a threat. I don't want to. I want you guys to take care of it. I had enough. So. Other questions? No further questions. I okay. But please, I want you to lose your heads and you figure it out for me. I've uh, been a homeowner here. But I've been here for a few months. My family house in 1959. Is this right that this happened to me? No. Why would the insurance company make a call about that? What, what would they have said? I don't understand anything about the story. So okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now what, what I feel the receptive is. Because they, the, the attorneys, right, who work for the insurance company, they want to win cases. They don't do really things because what happens is they didn't pay a claim, right? And then they got caught. So they, they, their motivation is that they don't have to pay a claim. They come out with a very good on the case and they hope never to get caught. I mean, they almost didn't get caught. They didn't get caught. They got their opinion. I don't know anything else about it. It was only you know, I was, was that in my appeal. And I had no time to do anything. I stuck in the correct evidence and I did the counsel and actually learned that about the phone around thing. But if something did get paid, would he get paid sooner? Well, I know. I was so I'm there, right? Um, so now I wouldn't have to well, we have a chance to have one big person plan, right? But I can only thought. They say they're the insurance company. They say the insurance company for their money. And um, okay. so, I, so, so I think, and I, I think so. I think uh, so. I've seen this picture. So I think what you're to answer your question, I think what you want is for not having a lot of money. Yeah, so that's what I want. I think what you want is for not having a lot of money. Yeah, so that's what I want. I think what you want is for not having a lot of money. Yeah, so that's what I want. I think what you want is for not having a lot of money. Yeah, so that's what I want. I think what you want is for not having a lot of money. Yeah, so that's what I want. Uh, those are on the pacer side. So I'm not a good one to make a little bit of a question. I don't think I need pictures. I need to know what you want and expect us to do. That's what I want in outer space somewhere. I don't know what you expect for us to do for you. We're talking about pictures. We can give us pictures. Because I understand all of it. I want to know what you expect us to do for you. I was going to say, there's also a uh, piece. Uh, MIC video. I just want to know. I just want to talk to you. There's also a, a video, right? And I can't get a copy of that video. I mean, I have a copy of the video. I can't get a copy of what the judge saw exactly, what, what Kennedy sent the judge. It, it, I know I wanted to do depositions. And everything the judge commented on, it's as if he saw something else. So I don't know that the fraud was committed there, or that nothing makes sense if the judge wrote. What would you like for us to do? Well, let's start with the fact that you contact Kennedy and ask her. About I, can, I, can, I, can I say, Mr. Luciano, what he wants us to do is to get in touch with our insurance company who is defending the borough to find out what can afford the committee against this gentleman. That's what he's talking about. It's so simple. He's talking about the pictures because that's where the fraud occurred by doctoring his pictures. Do you think that doctor will bring it to Mr. Charlie and then she's going to say, oh, yeah, I got it. Well, but he's a whole lot. But he's a whole Hey, Ms. Lerner, choose to have any issues and tell me what you would want. The residents of this town, if somebody wanted to come out, I'll tell you something. I'm surprised when we send the rest of them. I actually draw out how Ms. Kennedy should confess. 
on the court date. And all the reasons why she should. Because I believe that it's going to be, I think it's going to be in the best interest. I, I think there's a very good chance. And I think you should throw her for any, any time. I'm sorry about that. Can you heal us? Can you heal us? I, I the problem with the appeal is I, I, I wrote it as best I could. I didn't I didn't know about this until the night before I had to get one and then I told her when I began in. But when it came up to me when we start fraudulent evidence, it really sucked because the court wrote the evidence that they had. Yeah. Right? So did the court make a mistake? So you know that was really the number of things to do it is I I'm not gonna be very fraud. If you want to be fraud, I so maybe so what I did was I put the correct evidence in one file. And of course, Miss Kennedy, very carefully after the interview, the one uh tried to get all the evidence, all the correct evidence out on some you know that I think I lost the I lost the appeal. I want to say it was outrageous. Why don't you hire an attorney? Because quite frankly, we can't do anything for you to respond to We need some okay, to cause this act. I can do that, but you, can, but you also can't act without my request. In other words, you can do things on your own. If you find something to be outrageous, which you often do, you do. You often take actions that are not legal. And, you know, there's a, I think you want to be doing it. Express yourself very well. All you can. So many of you have some job and if you think your insurance company committed fraud, and I'm going to see that you 18 ways, no, 100 ways, then I think you can speak up regardless of what I say. Get in, get in to the court, right? I mean, the, the evidence that you're going to show us is different than what you presented to the court. Well, the court will run for an evidence. Well, what the court got, what the appeals court got, is what, what, what they sent in. I sent in additional stuff, but I did not make the case that, hey, this was fraud. There were two ways to do it. I was instructed by an attorney, you cover yourself, since, they, since you're talking about fraudulent evidence, even though you didn't submit it, make sure you submit the correct evidence that I did. And then Kennedy worked on trying to get it out. She didn't say, obviously she couldn't say, Hey, we went over the phone in February and she found the reason she tried to get it out. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, okay. Yes. One final question. I read your papers. And... There was one more coming. So, um, you obviously exonerated, right? found found so. You're obviously exonerated. Um, but now there's the insurance thing. The judge went off on the on the police and and and, and the woman. No one's in terms. Forcing one person. That was what he said about them. And 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 I can, I can uh, emphasize what you went through with a uh, complaint on your head. You're still going through. It. I know it goes away. Right. I know it doesn't. Believe me, I know it doesn't. Um, but with that being said, why now? Now that it's all over with the insurance company. Why is this so important to you? you just it's not over. What's not it's over? Not over. They won it. They won because they committed fraud. That's a very tough accusation. Okay, let me rephrase that. They won because I think they committed fraud. Yeah. Well, you tell me if it's if it's Rafa in the picture and when they're not there, how did it happen? Now, if they were the details weren't there, I'd say I'm telling you, you can't use failure. But everything else is there except the strap. And there are four strap yeah. two different pictures. Okay, look, the, the system failed you. Yeah. Uh, everything failed you. And unfortunately, the system didn't, well, it got exonerated. I'm one of the two people that the system did not have hard work out. Well, that's where they step back up. The characters that we had on, on the bonus side. Um, the problem is you don't have an attorney right now. You need an attorney. And um, you know, that we just decide to do things as a borough okay. because one person has an issue. Okay, what are your specifically? Well, yeah. okay. what I, uh, I have been here since 1959 and one capacity number, and that matters. And I have been here since 2009, and you guys have the ability to talk. <laughs> I know. I mean, I think that we feel bad with you, but we need to have a question that we can so that we could actually hire a proper attorney to represent us and give us an insurance company there. 
Okay, I'm going to make this kind of clear. I don't really think that we're involved in the sense that they do this to you. They do this to you. You sat there in the meeting with them. We didn't know that they were moving to settle because of what they had done. Right. Right. So they put this to the town. They didn't want to talk to the town. They were going to make the election to settle it. They were going to make the lawsuit. Right. So, uh, but they settled it. Uh, I'm not interrupting. I'm not interrupting. But they, they've done it in the past. And, and I'm sure they'll do it in the future. Um, it, it's just a terribly broke system here in New Jersey. And um, it goes back to um, uh, some fundamental things that I've observed in eight years. That I will not share tonight. That get me into too much trouble. I'm going to deal with it. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, the season of trains are familiar with New Jersey North. So this is really brazen. Some my cousin was turning on. I don't know. He said, "Other things are. You know, you also have the you know, the thing with something in the the power and that's completely in the wrong. It does get to me." And I appreciate it. And do whatever you can behind the scenes. Just help me. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. But by the way, to the council, um, that that table over there is a it's probably a fire code violation because it's in front of an exit there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know why it's there. Let's take it out. Okay. If anybody can get that out of there, we just have people there tomorrow. Okay. Anyone else in the public? Yes. Martin Geiger, Fifth Avenue, Alfred Street. I after the last meeting on September thirteenth. Uh, what the status was of the plans for the park improvements. And uh, there was mentioned back then that they were meeting with the borough administrator and that 25%, I think the number was 25% of the work had been done by the borough engineer. And so I was curious to know if in fact the work had been completed. If I recall correctly, the timetable was four months from the date the borough council approved the plan, which was June 28th. So July, August, September, October, I would think the plans were pretty much completed within a fortnight or so. A very good question. Yes, yeah, so a very good question. Uh, anybody on council or Bernie, can you update us? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, our plans have been submitted to the federal uh, administrator. Uh, we will wait for submission from the playground manufacturer of the uh, different options uh, uh, for the playground equipment to uh, submit to the borough. For a decision for the plans to be finalized uh, uh, this month. So did you just send them to the administrator or to the governing body? Uh, I sent them to the administrator. I haven't seen okay, that. So our standing instructions were to get it to everybody going. So can you just send it to everybody so we can, you know? Okay, well, that's good news. It's, uh, will the project then be bid out? Will the contract documents be done so the project can be bid out? We'll, we'll establish a, a bid date uh, with the borough uh, for uh, uh, for the contracts for the you know, for the bid packages to, to go out and uh, bids to be received. Uh, am I correct in my understanding that once you do that and once you send out the bid documents and and accept bids, that the council will have to adopt a new bond ordinance requiring at least four votes to uh, finance. The, uh, the project to the extent that there aren't other funds available to uh, pay for it. Is that your understanding? Uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, requirements of the bond uh, at this point. That's uh, perhaps for the CFO or so. Uh, I would suspect that that's probably that's probably here. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. One other thing. I also inquired at the last meeting about the interest rates the borough was earning on idle funds, and I have up to this point now received from the uh, from the sportsers copies of the September bank statements. It appears to me that all of the funds are being held in one bank, and that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as you're getting good return. Um, so, in light of what I have learned and what I have seen, I would suggest that the council consider 
at the end of the year when you do RFQs for various professional services, that you include banking services as well. So you can make sure that you find out what banks can offer the best services and perhaps save the borrower some money and earn the borrower some more money too. That's it. Thank you very much. That's a good point. Have the funds removed to higher interest rate accounts? Have, have the funds actually removed the higher uh, interest rate accounts? If I'm not mistaken, all the funds were still as of September 30th, earning interest at 0 0.05, except for the fund, and I'm not sure if you call it the, the operating fund, but the fund in which taxes, tax receipts are deposited. That was earning 3.88%. I had earned actually for the month of September about $30,000. Okay. So I'm not sure if that was a new rate because after the discussion last meeting or that, that was the rate that has been a all along. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, anybody else in the public? Yes. You know, your husband's at first? Okay, Karen Geiger, 270 Alfred. Um, on the parks, I was still a little bit confused on the timetable. Um, you say that you submitted the plans for the park to the borough administrator. When are you expecting the big documents to go out to bed, Bernie? Uh, well, as I had indicated, upon uh, approval of uh, what type of park uh, playground equipment uh, from the, the borough, we would then uh, incorporate that to finalize the, uh, the plans and then uh, Establish uh, dates and, and but, so but this makes I'm sorry, but my own information about the park committee um, makes it a little bit strange what you're saying. The equipment for the park could be a standalone effort. If there's equipment for up for two parks, they wouldn't be the same. They could be picked separately and installed on a separate contract. I don't understand why the entire park is being held up pending some decision on what equipment will go into the two programs. There's substantial work that has to be done on the timetable in order to be ready for the planning season. Most of the work um, is on the living field, which has to be raised, I believe, and set up so that also the turf could be installed. The rest of it is grading, and I don't understand why there's a delay in getting that done. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me, and I'd like to understand from the council, at least I'd like the council to make sure that we're moving this ahead quicker. A lot of time is invested in the news, um, getting us to the point of having a redone part on the program, and it should be done as quickly as possible. Um, the other item I have a question about is there's a payment, there's a hiring and payment of an individual with a salary of $70,000 in the finance office, but I don't know if that person is working there. Um, two, I really have authorized a salary of $70,000. That's precisely why. I was concerned about the uh, salary ordinance and the high maximums that we established, and we were told that nobody would be hired without the consent of the council. Yeah, well, so I'm just yeah. commenting. Delighted. Um, That's the same question. That person has been hired, and, and, and I think that's a little hard. Uh, but finally, tonight, I ended up on the uh, on revolution list. Now, I have nothing against the individual. I, I, I don't know, I think it's fine, but we have to follow our own laws, people. And I asked her about that, who's not here tonight, and she said, well, let's go and get done. But you can't hire people without having the, the, the governing body to approve it. So, we're, we, you know, where you going is absolutely right. Third, third. I normally don't agree with an acorn junk, but. That's once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> once I have because lately he's been right. And at the last meeting, an attorney was here and we all went into the executive session. And we came out of the executive session and adopted a resolution. So I asked under Oprah for a copy of that resolution. 
when it was told there was no resolution. It was a verbal resolution. So I went to the third documents, and lo and behold, I found a settlement agreement that had been approved, um, that had been submitted to the court. And that settlement agreement was predated by several days. That settlement agreement had some terms in it that I personally found um, deplorable, especially as represented by someone who was representing the borough. The item that I found on this was an item in the settlement agreement that required our legislators to give out their personal email addresses and the passwords. I don't like that overreaching. Um, where are you going next? Are residents going to be asked to give out their personal email addresses and the passwords so someone in the court can see what you're saying? This case has already crossed the ball well in excess, it's two cases, of the excess of $500,000. $474,000 appears on the list um, by three resolutions today. The attorney representing the ball in this case, I have watched in court and in one case, one time I did go to court, um, just loved the court with um, requirements that she said the borough would need. It has always been my understanding in Oprah that if documents don't exist, they don't exist. You don't have to reconstruct records to provide an open response. Yet that's what the borough did in this case. It went back to dumped files. The attorney reviewed the dumped files, hired attorneys to redact the dumped files, and then created documents. Um, I, when I submitted an open request to the borough, if the document doesn't exist, I'm told, I'm sorry, the document doesn't exist with that obligation. I don't understand why this went so awry, especially since the two cases that are involved um, involve discovery for two plaintiffs who are suing the borough and they're using this as a means to get information. It's very obvious from the questions asked. Um, but in any case, I really want to know this council is going to take the effort of reviewing the way opens are handled in this bar, coming up with distinct procedures which protect the integrity of borrow records and provide residents with not even residents, people, could be anybody, with the information that's required on a timely basis to incur almost five hundred thousand dollars in penalties because we haven't provided data is unconscionable. To have that data reconstructed, taking months of effort is unconscionable. It is a total waste of taxpayer funds that could be done to so many worthwhile things. And filling this kind of clear order is not amongst them. And for an attorney representing the borough to come to this council with a settlement that is so much against the interests of this borough in its detail, at least as I perceived it, also is unconscionable. And I think that the council should take action. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I think that's the most important statement I have for tonight. So I said two things. The reason why the person was hired in the finance office because we had an unexpected resignation and there's no one working at all. So the, as you know, the borough administrator, as in the past three borough administrators, have been authorized to hire people. Our last board administrator, the gentleman that's working upstairs about the council approving it. So this is all, you know what I mean? Now it's, you know, now it's a big deal that the administrator hired a person because there was no one in the finance department to fill the shoes of the person. And you can throw your hands up, but I'm proud of the reason why the person was hired 
at that point is because we had no one in there at all to worry. So if we couldn't wait for the next meeting today, you can't so a special meeting. That's why we're putting in it today. You could have had a special meeting. Mr. Speaker, you could have had a special meeting. Right. Can you interrupt them? You can have a special meeting. Second, it does not alter. It's 100% fact. You could have had a special meeting. And see what happens, okay? We have to fill the position. We had a resident here say, no one's in the office. You know why no one's in the office? Because no one's working. We have to hire someone. Second issue. Um, the reason why we have all these fines is because we have council members that refuse to do certification. Second issue is that got an order from the court that never passed it on to the next attorney. And it sat there for a whole year. So we hired an attorney that had to go and and review all this information that the court was requiring for us to do. I agree with you. I think our court was out of control. I wish that we could say, you know what, you know how much we pay people to you know how much we pay this lady, this this young lady right here to, to work on overs instead of doing borough business. It's out of control. I think the Oprah is out of control. So I agree with you. Yeah. But those are two of the reasons. I know the public session's over already, so I just wanted to reply to what you had to say. So look, so, first of all, there's no excuse to not follow the law, but you just said that you didn't follow the law of hiring. The law officer does not have the power to hire. So the, the council has the power to hire. I don't know what you're talking about. I acknowledge the fact that the council what decides we don't just make soft rules. So it's all that's why you can have a special meeting. You can have an emergency meeting. So what you're saying is it's okay, right? it's okay to break the law that we have. Say that. You can break the law. What is it like? We can have a special meeting. That's why I said to you, we're just going to compromise this. We're going to have a special meeting. Exactly. Okay, you pay like $200,000 for the last two administrators. Okay, you pay like that. You have nothing done. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, no, no, no. It's so important that the administrator was putting work that we have to hire another one. I don't think they're going to have any people. I don't think they're going to have any people. So, you know what? Administrator making 90 or not, whatever you know, 90 or something. Does she make five things a week? That is what is it? Does she make five things a week? Four days, and she's available along with it. And you look down there, you know, 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 we had some really interesting people who applied for that job, but they decided to give it to uh, Ms. Stern because that's what they wanted. And they loved it from that moment on, and I took a lot of I was upset for those young people. They came and they wasted their time to to sell what they were good, and they were good. They were very good. They were very good. And they chose a political person and not somebody who was there. Yeah. 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 Who are the previous two administrators you're referring to, sir? We got three. Okay, so do you do you know when you're speaking about Mr. Barbario, right? He was here for six months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and, and I'm not going to speak about what his performance was, but how long was Mr. Ratz here for? 
right <laughs> You should just do just a little bit of due diligence. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Well, tell us what he did then. He was on two weeks. Tell us what he did. No, he was here. The man was the man was in this disaster of a girl for two weeks. Yeah. And you expect him? You expect him? Really? Who is the person? Council hired him because of this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see the and the system fire chief there can probably attest to that that he did it when he was here. I'm not trying to put you on the spot either. It's just that this is why he was here. So I am getting complaints from the residents because you're getting emotional and you're talking with too close. So if you hear that, well, this room has spoken. No one's speaking. We have a virtual person. Okay. Um, Let's try some with our hand raised. Mr. Nota, you have the floor if you're ready. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Nota, we're calling on you. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hello, this is Heyman Mehta from 75 Robert Short. I, I usually don't join the meetings anymore because uh, whatever goes on, goes on. But I was I had recently seen in a case called Vele versus the borough, a surprising twist. Uh, and the twist was, I, I, I do not know how this council could have voted to enter a consent order and a settlement, giving $228,000, which is not your money, but to give it to the attorney or to give it to Ms. Valle, who basically is working for a law firm who's representing Lisette Duffy, essentially you are paying $228,000 to Ms. Duffy or Duffy's attorney to litigate against the firm, against the uh, borough. And I have no idea. And I read the consent order which was entered. I don't know how and who brings these kind of attorneys who actually, these are the basic principles which Mr. Marinolo, which Mr. Kim, which Mr. Kanjak and everybody should know that you can't order a third party to give up a password without making them a party to that litigation. A password to your own law firm or your own personal emails, where would it stop? Today you can do this, then actually, if this is what you counsel want to do, then you should order Mr. Marinello, Mr. Wunsch, and Mr. All these council members, including past council members, to turn over the passwords so that 
the borough can retrieve all those missing emails which have been deleted by Trapid Solutions or whatever the company's name was. Where is this going to stop? And is that the kind of vote which you all of you council members voted, I think, for? Or you just voted for something which you don't understand? Where does it stop? And I'm even kind of surprised that a judge entered the passed the order without Mr. Cranjack being in a party to that litigation. That's that litigation is against the borough. What has got that to Mr. with Mr. Cranjack in his personal capacity? Was this order submitted? to you guys before you took a vote or you just guys took a blind vote? Okay. And where does all this stop? So uh, the, the order was misrepresented by Ms. Asbury, although I suspect some members of council uh, conspired with her to make that misunderstanding. Uh, you should. And who had brought this Ms. Asbury Irene Good. Asbury, whatever the name is, hired her them in. Yes. Shame on you, all of you, okay? And shame on the borough attorney who actually let this consent. Oh, okay. I don't even talk to Mr. Cranjack at all. Yes. But I'm still saying if it happens to him, it can happen to all of you. She, she lied. So there's nothing else to be done. That's what she She lied. 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 Yeah, you can't understand. Yes, sir, Mr. All right, so Mr. Uh, Mehta, thank you for your comments. Okay. Um, you have, all of you have agreed to pay $300,228,000 after only paying $39,000 before? $38,000 in fees to that attorney? Come on. Come on, be careful. Be judicious. You can't give away people's money like this. Do your job and see what your guys are approving. This is not what you guys have got elected for. And especially the Democrats, you guys said that you're going to waste, stop wasting monies of people. This is continuous what? waste of money. From year to go. So when you can point to something that we did that we're looking for, I'll gladly take responsibility for it. Yeah. The maintenance attorney that puts us in this. That's why we hired. That's why we made a motion to hire. I really. I really can't hear the conversation because of the sound system. So I, I just don't get it. I just don't I, understand. I don't see I know. I'm not seeing anything. Um, okay. So, um, anybody else? Okay. Can motion to call us? Second. Okay. Uh, I'm coming folks. Yeah, you can offer counsel to meet and discuss. Uh, yeah, I have something I'd like everybody to be aware of. That um, with our affordable housing attorneys and Mr. Randall from the planning board, uh, Judge Farrington has agreed to allow our, our uh, building department to hear applications in zones that are affordable housing. I think that was a pretty good, uh, a pretty good win for Angle Eclipse to be able to have our uh, planning board start to hear. Uh, applications again. Well, that's only the fact that she should never have taken that away in the first place. But regardless of the fact, the fact is, is that we didn't have it. So you didn't have it. Then we all have it. We're getting something that should never have been taken away from the first place. Well, good shout. I'm just 
in the first place, but you had one child, you're a child. Yeah, no, you have a motion to go into class session. Second that. Oh, the motion to go into class session. The motion to go into class session. The motion to go into there's a motion to go into closed session to discuss open litigations, um, specifically which ones? The LA case. The LA, okay. Anything else? No, that's it. Um, so, uh, can we all call? Member, uh, Member Valari? Yes. Member Kutrudis? Yes. Member Kim? No. Council President Luciano? No. Member Simon? No. Member Diego Gorio? Yes. Can you use the time? So, we're going to go into closed session. Um, give us a little time. Let's make it a Yes. Can I give my committee report? I know you don't think it's worth it, but. I didn't know you had one. Go ahead. You didn't give me a chance. Okay. So, well, you just yeah. I'm doing anything you want to expect for The full clinic on Tuesday, I think we should be deep. For the residents of the community. The community building. And on Saturday, the 28th, from 10 to 12, there will be uh, the, the free rabies clinic. By the way, the flu clinic will be from 4 30 to 6 30. Thank you. And what's the rabies? Sorry about that. And that's where usually the leaky dog is, isn't it? Where they can do that from the center? I would imagine so, Mary Sam. And I just wanted to know sometime in the month of October, I had, uh, in November rather, I had hoped to do something this month, but there's a lot going on right now. So I am going to try to put together a food drive because there are a lot of people in this area that have food insecurity. So I'm going to try to coordinate that with um, the food pantry that you can collect for every week and um, the DPW. And I'll have a date, hopefully by the next, well, maybe before the next meeting, depending upon if we have a special meeting, I may introduce it there. Okay, good. It's always good to do at least one good thing at every meeting. Um, payment of vouchers, six hundred thirty-four thousand seven hundred ninety-two dollars and one cent. Have a motion. So, a second. Member Villari. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? The payment of vouchers. Payment of vouchers. Okay. Yes. Um, Member Kim? Yes. yes. Uh, so next up with the consent agenda, all consent agenda items will be enacted. With a single motion, and the items requiring discussion will be removed from the consent, but, excuse me, will be removed from the consent agenda. Um, I just have a point on. Um, 201 and 202. It's funny how fines in the McMahon case get paid to the Treasury and fines in the Veterans slash Duffin case get paid uh, to the attorney actors. So we've already talked about this. Uh, the the other statute does not actually permit any fines or sanctions to be paid to anyone other than the Treasury of the state of New Jersey. Uh, but because of what I feel is corruption going on, they are actually paying the attorney directly here. Um, the prison investigation, I think, is criminal also. Because what's going to happen is the state of Germany is going to say, where's, where's the fine? We're supposed to receive a fine. And, and the bill is going to say, let me pay it to Atkins. And St. James is going to say, well, we don't care. Pay us again. So we're going to pay the same fine twice. Just one correction, man. We're paying what the court is ordering us. No, it's a percent. The record is clear. We're paying what the court ordered us. No, no, you're paying what I think uh, snuck past the court, and the court agreed. I think I'm reading it. I hope it's already. Uh, and the McMahon, I mean, 
one was done on a five day notice, but two was Atkins and Asbury, who was rushed through, and it was done on a consent basis. So, uh, the other thing that's missing is in, in uh, hold on a second, in, I'm, I'm talking, so I don't care what you're saying with the into the project. Um, so could somebody please explain what those dollars are the tax of Yes, I can. Yeah, you can. Why? 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 I don't, I don't see 2201 in this package. I might have seen it in the summer. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Good discussion. Mr. Kudrus. I, I would just like to strip some of these out of there and vote before the motion and a second out of the motion. We make the motion. Okay. The motion is on the second out of the motion. Any well, if you want to move some out, go ahead and propose it. It's fine. And the city of Siena does not control this meeting or anything else in this room. I'm following the rules of order. Let's see, Mr. Kuchibis. You can have the floor. You the floor. Something's going to get voted on separately. Give us the so we're in discussion right now. So I think that we should pull out a one on the two, um, uh, two uh, ten and eleven. A one and two ten and eleven proposed the consent agenda is for everything, but a one or two. My motion is to accept the consent as 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 consent. That's the motion. You can't change my motion. All right. Want to just tell the whole thing then? It's up to you guys. Just able the consent agenda. Yeah. Okay. And then sure, come back and vote and accept it. Come on, all in favor? No, no, I will pass the roll call. Have a roll call. Can we make sure we're voting on the right? We're voting at the table. My consent agenda as a motion to accept the full consent. Right. Yep. Okay. Remember the lottery? Yeah, what's the motion? Who accepted consent agenda? Yeah. 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 Y
Member Valari? No. Member Katrugas? No. Member Kim? Yes. Member Councilor Castellano? Member Simon? Yes. Member DiGregorio? Yes. I make a motion to accept two This is the uh, hold on, sorry. This is the payment to boost Atkins of which Atkins signed down in, in terms of being paid under the welfare statute that does not permit him to be paid under the welfare statute. And at the same time, uh, it has not done with this council with any opinion other than to say. Judge Farrington and the attorney on this case are not the legislature of the state of New Jersey, and they do not have the time to change the legislature. Thank you, Mr. Luciano. So I appreciate you. You know, the first of the motion, the second, and if you can stop this picture, we can actually get to these meetings. That's good. So that's the story, everybody. So the main saying of this one. There's a motion exactly from the people who want to see Ms. Beth who's here in the paper. No. Member Katrubis? No. That's the President Luciano? Aye. Member Simon? Yes. Member Diego Gorio? No. And let's have it. Okay, just three oh three. Two oh three. Acknowledge I had two thousand dollars donations and authorizing the donation to the for the victims and families caused by the holy fire. This is you know two oh two cost us about three hundred thousand dollars by not paying next to that. Thank you. Is there a second is a discussion? I think this is a good cause. And can I have a call? Okay. Member Gulali? Yes. Member Katrubis? Yes. Member Kim? Yes. Council President Luciano? Aye. Member Simon? Yes. Member Di Gregoria? Yes, and thank you to the Recreation Director for his work on that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's not a sense from Mr. Luciano, but that's fine. Is there a motion? Two. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best thing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a second agenda. Second, then. I was seconded by Mr. Luciano. Member Valari? 